as we are nearing the end of August, another month in 2018, today's message is a relook and a reminder about the word of the Lord for this year, a year to build again on old foundations. Today, um, it's the 20, 19th of August and we've gone past the halfway mark of this year. You realize that? One more Sunday and eight months are out of this year, right? It seems like just like yesterday, we were just saying, Happy New Year, how are you? And, you know, may this year be a blessing and, and so on. And, um, you know, as is, uh, you know, something that happens here at All People's Church, we, we wait on God, pastor waits on God and releases the word of the Lord for 2018, right? The word of the Lord. It's a prophetic word for uh, the church community uh, and uh, it's, it's something that happens uh, on the New Year's Eve service, um, the word of the Lord. Now, the word of the Lord could be a promise we receive it. The word of the Lord could be an instruction. We obey it. The word of the Lord could be a combination of both. And this year, it was that. It was an instruction with a promise. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm saying all this is that um, since we've gone past the six-month mark, normally we, we kind of revisit the word of the Lord. We go back and we take a look at it and say, oh, this is what God has spoken. So uh, what do we do about it? You know, six months have gone, seven months have gone. Um, so I just want to ask, you know, do you re remember, do you recall what the word of the Lord uh, for 2018 is? Some hashtags? What did you say? Something? Someone said something? Rebuild? Foundations? Old? Okay, any other hashtag? This is a very important word, yeah? Uh, rebuild. Building again, build again on old foundations, building again on old foundations, right? So uh, we're going to kind of revisit that. So the title of today's message is Rebuild to Impact, right? We've been talking about build to impact, but this is rebuild to impact because this is the word of the Lord for 2018. We're just going to revisit and some, some thoughts on as we work out this word. You know, what is it that we need to watch out for? What is it that we need to look out for? So the, the word of the Lord is this, a year to build again. Now, can we say that? Build again. Right? A year to build again on old foundations, right? So what do we mean by old foundations? So old foundations is not our past life or a sinful lifestyle or something that we, that we walked out of, Right? Old foundations is the original blueprint, the original vision, the original intent or purpose that God has for us. So the word is this, that we will build again. Now when we get a word from the Lord for a time period, it doesn't in any way make the rest of the word insignificant. Right? This is the word of God, the final authority for each one of us. And we value the word, we esteem the word. It's just that in this season, there's a grace and an anointing that God just seems to be highlighting and saying, you know, you step into this and I'm behind you. And I want this to be done in this body. So the emphasis is this. He's saying build again and build again on old foundations. And old foundations are the original blueprint, sorry, the purpose, the vision. And it applies to various areas of our life. Before we go into that, let's look at the scripture um, from which we get that. Isaiah 58 and verse 12, the New King James Version goes like this. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. And when we read the Good News Bible, um, you know, it's a simpler uh, language and it makes it very clear. It says, your people will rebuild what has long been in ruins, building again on the old foundations. You will be known as the people who rebuilt the walls, who restored the ruined houses. The so picture is there of a city, has a lot of ruined places of dwelling, ruined houses. And this is the promise. Build again. This is the instruction, build again. And the promise is this, 
that you will see things raised up. As we begin to build again, the promise from God is that we will see things raised up. It's a twofold promise. The second one is like it. You will be known as a people who repair, rebuild, raise up, and restore. So God is inviting us as a congregation, is inviting us to build again. And he's saying, this is the instruction. Would you step into it? Would you build again? And as you build again, he's saying, this is my promise. That not only will you experience, will you see things raised up, but also it will become a lifestyle. It will become a ministry where you will raise up, repair, rebuild, restore things in people's lives. That's his promise. That's his promise. So where do we go to for the original blueprint? Where do we go for the original design? Obviously, it's the word of God. The manual. The original design. For whatever, you know, what, whatever we need, the word of God has the answer. For direction, for counsel, for wisdom, the word of God. And so the word of God is the manual, the blueprint we go to, we refer to and say, God, now this area of my life is in ruins. Or this area of my life needs repair. This area I've not visited for many years. It needs to be rebuilt, God. So we go to the word. The Lord Jesus says like this in, um, and he, was, he just gave a parable in, uh, in um, Luke chapter 7, I think, where he says that when we hear his voice, when we hear his words, and we may do them, he likens us to a man who built his house upon the rock. Sorry, Matthew 7 and 24. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. That when we hear the word and when we do it. So we've heard the word. You know, the word of the Lord. We've heard it. Now what remains is that we do it. That we start building again. So it's time to look and see, you know, introspect and see what is it that needs building? Is it my personal life and my walk with the Lord? How's that doing? Is it in ruins? Was there a time when I was so passionate for God, so passionate for His Word, so passionate for spending time in His presence and prayer and so on? And somehow that area seems to be completely gone. Other things have crowded in and taken priority and taken precedence. Or it could be marriage. You know, we heard a lot of testimonies preparing for marriage. It could be marriage. Is, is there still transparency? Is there still openness? Is there still communication? Is there still emotional intimacy? Or is that something that needs to be rebuilt according to his plan and according to his blueprint? Is that something that needs repair? Is that something that needs to be restored? God is encouraging us Build again. Build again. And he's promising. You will see it happen. And also, it will be something that you will do. That you will raise up. Or is it a profession? Remember the day when you started work, so full of enthusiasm, you know, so full of energy, and you said, God, I'm going, to, I'm going to change this place. I've got so many ideas. I'm just buzzing with ideas and and I'm going to change this place. I'm going, to, I'm going to give my best. I'm going to be excellent in my work. Disappointment, disillusionment, discouragement. And then we're saying, I just want to get back home. When will we can come? I just want to pay the bills and, and be done with it. So we need to ask the question, God, who am I serving now? In this company, in this organization, who am I serving who do I really belong to? What purpose am I serving beyond, you know, whatever role that I'm doing, whatever bills that I'm passing, whatever things that I'm doing, what role am I serving really? Is there a bigger purpose? And God wants to rebuild that. God wants us to walk, step out and walk in that path of restoration. Saying, build again. Can we say that together? Build again. 
right? Maybe it's business. And he said, you know, this, I want to, my business to be a model, a prototype. I want to do things for the kingdom of God. I will live with integrity, impact people. And this business, it'll be like a lighthouse. Maybe things got tough. Things happened. Maybe there was strife. We couldn't manage, you know, relationships, teams. And then it's like, just like any other, that vision is gone, that fervor is gone, the passion is gone. And God is saying, build again. Build again. Come back. Raise up what has fallen down. Build again. Maybe it's something to do with church, something to do with ministry, even the government. Maybe government is where you're working or you're praying, things to change, things to... Uh, things to be really changed in the government, the way things are working. And as we seek God and we say, God, let integrity and righteousness and let it be there, God. And God is inviting us. The Lord is inviting us to build again. To build again. Now, there could be many reasons why things are in ruins. Maybe we strayed away from the vision Maybe we made some poor choices, some bad decisions, whatever it is. There could be many reasons. But today, you know, God wants to remind us and saying, build again. Build again. So we build by the word of God. We take the blueprint. We will build by the word of God. And we build by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, God has given us his resources. He's saying, okay, here's the blueprint. And he's saying, the author, I'm the author, and I'll indwell you, and I'll, you can always lean on me, and I will lead you. I will guide you. And in Isaiah 61, this is what we read. Isaiah 61 and verses 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Talking about the anointing. Anointing is the work and person of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And verse 4, very interesting, it says, you know, verse 1 starts with the spirit of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord, the assignment, the specifics of that. And then verse 4, it says, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. Can we all say that together? Rebuilt. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Now this is the promise from God, that his word is there to give us the wisdom, that his anointing, his empowering is there to enable us to carry it out, enable us to do it. But all of us know that, you know, rebuilding is a little more difficult than building. Yes? Because we come, and then we look at, look at the mess. We say, God, my life, my family, my marriage, God, my, my profession. God, look, at this, look at the ruins it's in. And emotionally, you know, it's such a draining thing. God, I don't even want to take a step. Forget it, God. Tomorrow. <laughs> God, where do I start now? You know, is that some of our questions? Where do I start? Such a mess. Where do I start? And in the word, we see someone whom we can relate to, who had the same kind of experience. Right? And we read about uh, him, and actually there are two rebuilding projects. Right? One is in Nehemiah. The other one is in Ezra. Nehemiah rebuilding the wall. It's a, these are rebuilding projects, things that were there, destroyed, in ruins, and God is saying, okay, rebuild. So Nehemiah, he hears the news of the walls being 
broken, everything, the city lying in ruins. And he's so overwhelmed. He mourns. He weeps. He's so overwhelmed with emotion. So when we look at the ruins in our lives, it's okay to be overwhelmed by emotion. It's okay. It's fine. That happens. You just look at those ruins and say, God, what a mess. Because you look at those ruins and, you know, each stone there is talking about maybe some wrong choice, maybe something that happened, something that we were not alert to, etc. Everything, every stone is telling a story and we are looking at that and we're saying, God, you know, what a mess, God. But if you look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah, he, he was overwhelmed. He mourned and he fasted and he prayed and he cried out to God. With all emotions, everything that was there, he just went to the presence of God. For in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is peace. In the presence of God, there is restoration for our soul, for our emotions. So emotionally, you know, we, are, we, we may not be capable. We're saying, God, this is too tough. This is too difficult. How can I build again? Every time I take a step to build again, I'm, I'm just assaulted by regrets. I'm assaulted by, you know, all the things that I did. The Lord is saying, build again. Build again. So we go to God and we, we want to vent. We vent before him. We say, God, you know, all this is happening. But in the presence of God, many times we feel, you know, we, we hesitate to come to the presence of God. Either for grace or for mercy. But God says, come. Come boldly. You need grace? Come boldly. I've made a way. I've already made a way. Unlimited access through the shed blood of Christ. He said, come. Come. So we come we receive his peace. His peace fortifies our mind. It fortifies our thinking. Strengthens us. We come and we receive his joy. Even though the situation has not changed, emotionally we are stronger. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. He strengthens us. So we receive that strength and we step out and we start the work of building, rebuilding. Now, when we look at the book of Nehemiah, we see that certain things happen when he actually started, you know, the whole process. Firstly, we see that he receives the favor of God. Amazing. He's a cupbearer in the court of the king. And he goes to the king. He has a long face that morning. The king says, what happened? And he says, you know, my city is lying in ruins. And the king says, okay, go. What do you need? I need paid leave. Take it. What else? Um, you know, on the way, permission, letter permission, you know, hostile people. Okay. And then he pushes one more, you know, saying, okay, maybe I'll try this. Uh, we need some resources, raw materials, etc. It's yours. The favor of God. Why? Because when we go back to the blueprint of God, we receive the favor of God. We're going back to the blueprint. We're saying, God, this is your word. This is what you said. So I'm, I'm on the assignment to rebuild according to your blueprint. And God says, you have my favor. You have my approval. Go ahead. Do it. He's backing us up. Now maybe we're thinking of building again with several areas that we listed. And we're wondering, Lord, how can I build? But God says, I'll release my favor. I'm releasing my favor. I'm releasing my resources. And as we start the process, he, you know, he gives his resources, revelation, wisdom, encouragement from his word. And all that we need, the know-how. You know, he sends people, he, he gui guides us to certain, maybe a workshop or, or some meeting somewhere where he builds us up. He gives us the resources for the inner man. And then we see that as we... As Nehemiah starts, um, 
I just want to read from Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Um, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 18 um, says, And I told them of the hand of my God, which has been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, Let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this work. So God sends people who are like-minded. God sends people who feel the same way that you do to strengthen your work, to strengthen my work. He sends people. He says, okay, hear someone with a word of encouragement. And we all know, you know, when we are really down, somebody comes and gives a word of encouragement, nothing profound, but they're just saying, hey, I'm with you, I'll get it done, don't worry. We are so encouraged. Yes or no? Yeah. Somebody says, no, don't worry, no, I'll take care of this. It's nothing big. It's saying, okay, um, you need to open the house and you want me to go and switch off the geezer that I, you, know, you left on when you went on your you know, two-week two vacation. I'll get it done. Simple thing. So much of encouragement. And God sends his people and says, encourage them. In fact, in Ezra, we, Ezra, we, we read about the prophets of God. Haggai and Zechariah, the prophets of God come and they prophesy and they encourage the people who are doing the work of rebuilding. So God makes sure that his word comes through. He sends his people, he sends his encouragement. So there are people who will come and encourage us on our way. That's what, that was all good news, but then there's some, something that's not so good as well. We see that as soon as people heard, we read about, you know, Sanballat, uh, Horonite, and um, uh, there's another person, uh, I just read out the name, Tobiah, the uh, Ammonite, and so on. So th these people, when they hear that the, the people of, you know, they are rebuilding the wall, they start taunting. They start taunting, they're saying, they start ridiculing, they start laughing at them. And that is also true. Many times we are unprepared for that, right? Saying, God, this is your work. You have asked me to rebuild. You have asked me to do this. You have asked me to repair. And I'm doing it according to your blueprint. And what is this that I'm facing? And if you read Nehemiah, you see that it's not a one-time thing. They come, and as soon as they hear, they start ridiculing, they start discouraging, they start laughing, mocking at them. Then Nehemiah says, no, we will continue. He prays, he continues. Then halfway through, the wall is just half built, built to half of its height. And then we see that again, all of them band together and then they start ridiculing, mocking. And they make a joke about it and say, even if a fox walks on its walls, it will bring everything down. And that's not all. The work is over, almost over. The wall is rebuilt. What remains is just for the gates to be placed there. Even then, they are conspiring. And they're saying, call him out. They're inviting him to come to the plains. Four times they do that, saying, you know, let's conspire, let's finish him off. And the fifth time, they send another letter. And, let's do this. and, and Nehemiah is so focused. He says, no, no. He doesn't even respond. He doesn't even bother. He says, I'm just focused. He keeps going. But he does something, you know, which is something that we need to learn. He prays to God and he arms his people so that they are alert. They are alert. They have their weapons. They are alert. They are armed. And they are standing there. They are praying. They are alert. And that's something for us to learn that even as we start the work of rebuilding, repairing, restoration, it is required of us to watch out for this and to be alert. We have already been clothed with the armor of God. That we stand with the armor. Now it doesn't say that they fought actually. They just stood. They stood their ground. They stood alert. And the enemy did not even attack. 
but they had to face the ridiculing. They had to listen to the words of discouragement. And the word of God is alerting us to that, that these will happen and it's possible. But we stand God, we pray, and we continue the work of building again, of rebuilding. Amen. So today, you know, maybe you're thinking of some area in your life that, that you wanted to rebuild, restore, and saying, God, I want to start doing that. And then immediately, you know, discouragement. And sometimes it's not even other person, right? It's just the memory of a past failure. It's just the pain of regret. And it's a voice that's screaming out. And sometimes it's a memory of a childhood. You know, that teacher who said, you will never amount to anything, you useless fellow. Right? That just comes up. Oh, I'm starting this, so... Or maybe it was in your own house, and they said, you know, look at your brother. Have they, have they done that? Look at your brother. Look at your sister. Look at the report card. Now you tell me. And all those things come back, even before we step on that path of building again, being obedient to God. And the thing is this, Word of God warns us about that, Word of God alerts us to that. So we don't rush in ignorant, but we know that, okay, these things happen, but I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to go to the presence of God. I'm going to stand God. Whether it's the beginning of the work, whether it's the middle, whether it's the end, I'm going to stand guard. Is it my marriage? Is it my family? I'm going to stand guard. Is it my personal walk with God? I'm going to guard my testimony. Yes, would there be attacks to bring me down? Yes, but I'm going to stand guard. I'm going to protect my testimony. Like that, various areas of our lives. Professionally, you know, do I work with integrity? All these people mocking me. I've been set aside, you know, it's a wrong kind of set aside, you know, sanctified, consecrated in the office. But the encouragement is that God is with us. God is with us. He's the God of hope. He's the God of peace. He's the God of comfort. He's with us. He's for us. You know, when it comes to um, receiving a word and seeing the word being fruitful. The Lord Jesus teaches, taught his disciples in a parable. We see that in Mark chapter 4 and also in Matthew chapter 13, we see the parable of the sower and the seed, right? The sower comes and sows its seed. And the first batch, it falls on the wayside and the enemy comes and takes away. So maybe God is speaking his encouragement. Maybe God is speaking his counsel, his wisdom, his instruction. And Matthew 13 says that when people do not understand, they're hearing, but they're not engaging enough to listen and put to practice and, and act on it, the enemy takes it away. Then the seed falls on stony ground. And persecution, tribulation comes to take away the word again. Just look at the relentlessness of the enemy, unrelenting, coming after the word. Why? Because the word will produce faith. The word will give us a vision. It will produce something in us that will bear fruit for the kingdom. So the enemy comes after the word to take it away. Trials, tribulation for the sake of the word. And because there is no root, it's dried up. Then the third category, it falls among thorns, and thorns represent cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lust for other things. Cares of this world. You know, many times, um, the cares are actually legitimate needs, very legitimate needs. You know, the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, he's saying, um, don't, don't worry, don't be anxious. And he's talking about basic needs like food and shelter and clothing. And he says, don't worry about it. He says, for your father knows that you need this. Which means that 
God knows that these are legitimate needs. God knows that these are legitimate needs. So the moment it becomes a preoccupation in my mind, it becomes a worry. It becomes a care. And that care, you know, the word there um, is a Greek word which, which gives a picture of something that is sliced into, you know, something that is cut into different slices. You know, our mind sometimes, thinking about so many different things, preoccupied, worried, anxious. So this is capable of really choking the word to thorny ground. Cares of the world, lust for other things, deceitfulness of riches. Now God knows we need money. God knows that it's, it's something that he's the one who richly gives us all things to enjoy. The, but the minute we put our trust in uncertain riches, Paul writes to Timothy and says, hey, there's something that needs to be aligned. It is God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. But the minute we put our trust in uncertain riches, it becomes a thorn that chokes the word. And then the last category talks about the good ground which bears fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. So we receive the word of God gladly when it's a promise, when it's an instruction. There's something that we need to follow through. Maybe in August, you know, 19th August, and we're thinking, maybe some of us are saying, I, I've just forgotten about it. Yeah. First week, we, we talked about it, and all that was fine, but eight months have gone, and I've just, you know, I've just shelved it. And it's a reminder for us to take it out, to take that word. It's a reminder for us to build again. Maybe some of us are saying, you know, I tried it for six months, June 30th, brother, that's it. That was the end of it. After that, I'm a new man. I'm waiting for the next word. Let's see what we can do with that, you know. Maybe we've given halfway through because we've given up halfway because there was a lot of discouragement, disillusionment, and so on. But God is reminding us, will you build again? Will you come back to the original blueprint? And so that the anointing, the Spirit of the Lord can rebuild things in our lives. Amen. So, the, you know, uh, let's pray and um, just call the worship team up and let's take this time to just be in the presence of God and just ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to repair? What is it that you want me to, you know, want to be restored in my life? And, um, and say, Lord... If it's, if it's our personal life, just make a choice, make a decision. God, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to you, God. I'm coming back to you, Lord. And maybe for some of us, it's still a struggle, you know. God, how can I go back? I see the ruins. Every time I take a step, I see the ruins. You know, just can you come back to the presence of God as he fills you with hope? Can we come back to the presence of God as he fills you, you know, as he fills us with his peace, as he strengthens us? as he showers his favor upon us, and he says, come, now you go, do it. And maybe this time, as we've seen in the Word, you know, we can, we can be alert. We will not be ignorant. We will be alert. We will be alert to the wiles of the enemy. We will be alert to some of the things, we'll be aware of some of the things that are going on emotionally. And say, oh God, okay, I've settled it. Yes, I know that it will happen, but I'm going to the presence of God. I'm going to the presence of God to receive grace. I'm going to the presence of God to receive mercy, to obtain grace, to obtain mercy.
make this our prayer to God. Say, God, I will build my life, God. I will build again. I will restart again. I thank you, Lord. You're the God of second and third and fourth chances. Just lift our hands to God. No. before you this morning we just cry out to you Father God. I pray that Lord, whatever areas that we are seeking you for Lord I pray that the blueprint from your word will be Lord, imprinted in our heart, inscribed in our hearts God and Lord I pray that you will guide us to your word open our eyes to see the truth over there Open our ears, God, to see and to hear the voice of the Spirit. To hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open our ears, God. Uh, let's just take this time to just, just, be, just rest in the presence of God and say, God, you speak. You know, our God is a God who speaks in the here and now. And it could be a gentle prompting. And maybe it's a scripture that he's bringing to our memory be a word of encouragement it could be something visual that he's showing some some place where we need to start you know, maybe a vision a picture and our God speaks in amazing ways we check it with the word and we say God I bring it under the authority of your word and not only do I want to hear not only do I want to see what you're doing but I want to do it God I want to be a doer of the word so, you know, as a team, just plays, let's just take some time to just quieten our hearts and just hear from Him. Speak, God, for your servant listens. to remind us and with these words it is possible it is possible and he wants to remind of that scripture to him who believes to him who believes and that's why Satan comes to take away the word which produces faith so that we can believe and this morning even as we've heard his word, even as he experiences touch. Can we say, Lord, I believe. And I know 
that as I trust in you, as I put, I put my faith in you, you will just move me into the realm of possibility. You know, we're going to pray for one another and uh, I just want to request the uh, you know, life group leaders and prayer leaders uh, to come and uh, stand here, please. And, and anyone who needs prayer, come. Life group leaders, prayer leaders, you are here and uh, maybe worship leaders, we are here. And if you can just stand here right in front, you know, we're just going to intercede. We're just going to pray. We're going to ask God. We're going to hear from God, right, uh, on behalf of others. You know, there's nothing special about any of us here. Um, but we're just going to do you know, what the Word of God says, that we are members, we are in the body of Christ, and we are members of one another. So we give strength and we receive strength and so on. So we're just praying for one another with the Scripture. So just come. Just come. If you have a need, and if you want to share that need, that's okay. If you want to say, you know, I just want to be prayed for. Maybe it's something that you're undertaking. Maybe it's something to do with what we heard just now, what we heard, the word we heard. Say, I need some encouragement. I need a touch of God. Just come. And uh, as people who are praying, we are going to be, there's some space here as well. Uh, some of us can come here. Um, maybe Anand. Um, Anand had some space here. You can come here as well. Um, so, yeah. Just opening this time up. And as those of us who are praying, we're going to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, you know, saying, and we're just going to release that, release that word. Uh, it's going to be a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, but it's it's coming from God. We will check, we'll test it, and put it to practice, and uh, it's so powerful, right? So let's do that. Let's open up this time. close the service now but um, you know those of you who want to stay back and be prayed for welcome to do that um, let's close the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom and may he take you may he take us on that path of building again on that path of recovery, on that path of restoration. It may start today. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.